All right, so let's go to the next segment, which is experimental approaches and emerging, emerging treatments for relapse and refractory myeloma. Uh, let's start off talking a little bit about Selenexor and what we know at this data. There was some data, uh, there is some data that's been looked at at ASH, certainly, and then there was a comparison with real world uh, analyses, which, by the way, is a phrase that just drives me crazy um, <laughs> because it suggests that my patients don't live in the real world. Uh, but anyway, go ahead, Tom. Talk, talk to us a little bit about Selenexor. Uh, that's good. So, <laughs> so Selenexor, it, it is the first oral selective inhibitor of nuclear export. Um, it blocks uh, transition of uh, proteins from the nucleus to the cytoplasm some important control proteins like p53 and other oncoproteins. Um, and it has shown uh, efficacy in preclinical models with myeloma. Um, and then co in combination with dexamethasone, we saw an early phase one uh, study with um, some activity in relapse refractory people, and then a much larger study of 122 patients, the STORM study, where patients were treated with Selenexor and dexamethasone. Um, in, in patients who were um, refractory to image proteasome inhibitors and a monoclonal antibody, they actually had a, quite a good response rate of 26%. Um, that large phase two data was um, presented to the FDA, and the ODAC committee decided not to approve the study based on a couple things. One is toxicity. There, there is toxicity from this molecule. There's a lot of nausea. There's a lot of anorexia. There's hyponatremia. There's some diarrhea associated with it and fatigue. And there was a lot of supportive care that went into supporting patients that received this, this therapeutic. The second is that they were caught a little bit on the dexamethasone and that how much of that 26% of the response was truly from dexamethasone. And then the last part was, you know, what, what, what is the control population? What is the kind of triple class refractory control population? And what would be the expected uh, PFS in that population? So, it, so actually at ASH, sorry, at ASCO, um, Paul Richardson did a retrospective review and tried to uh, do kind of a case control cohort of patients who were triple class refractory and got their first therapy at, as either Selenexor or the comparator arm, the control arm. And in fact, in that one, the PFS was about a little over five months for patients that received Selenexor and dexamethasone. And in the the control arm, it was less than three months. So it was a big difference. And survivals were actually less than six months in that population. So where survivals were 10 plus months in patients getting Selenexor. So really compared to the control arm, I actually think there's some activity. The problem is, is in my mind, is the toxicity. Are we able to support these patients? And can this really be taken to a broad clinical practice with all the support that's needed? Others have experience with Selenexor? Um, no, I, I, I don't have any uh, experience with, with the STORM patients, you know, outside of single patient INDs. Um, but I agree, I think that the, the key issue is the safety profile and, and the fact that you are giving um, a lot of um, IV antiemetic support, um, IV fluids uh, for an oral therapy. So I, I think that's, that's the challenge. Even though those challenges get better um, as, as therapy progresses, but you're going to have a selection bias there. Patients who are going to do well with that compound are going to stay on and, and, and continue to tolerate treatment. The patients who either are going to fail therapy or not tolerate it, you know, they're, they're going to be out after a cycle or two. Uh, but everyone requires uh, more attention uh, with supportive care during that first uh, couple of months. So, so there is a phase three trial now, the Boston trial, which is Selenexor plus uh, bortezomib and dexamethasone versus bortezomib and dexamethasone. And it's in an earlier population. So maybe it's in a less heavily pretreated population. Maybe that population is uh, less frail or might be able to tolerate this therapy better. And we will actually get better data in terms of what the true toxicity is when you put it in a combination and whether you see as good a, an effect here, triplet versus doublet, that will lead to FDA approval. So th those data should be in by the end of the year. I have, to, I have to say, I'm actually fairly impressed with the PI combinations. Um, in, first, in the ability to overcome resistance to a PI, uh, both with bortezomib and carfilzomib. I think those data, those small trials have been presented. 
The second is that you actually give less Salinexor when you combine it with a PI, and that might mitigate some of the GI tox, I think, that, that you guys have talked a little bit about. At least that's my experience. And then the data that was presented on DARA plus Salinexor also looked pretty interesting as well. Um, so I, I think we just need, I think we got to work a little bit on dosing and scheduling uh, to, to make it work a little bit.